Golden Dain. Hi, and welcome to Icelandic for Foreigners. This video is a follow-up to my previous video about masculine noun declensions. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the irregular patterns that you might see. Now, it's important to always remember that when you're learning declension sets, you really can just learn patterns. You can't learn actual rules, and there will almost always be exceptions to the rules. But hopefully, if you recognize some of the patterns, you can start to predict when that'll happen. So let's look at some of the irregularities that you'll see with masculine nouns. The first thing that we're going to look for is irregular plurals and genitives. Now when you look a word up in the dictionary, you'll often see parentheses after it, and in those parentheses there will be two endings, and the first is the genitive ending, and the second is the plural nominative ending. So here for the word dabur, which means valley, we see that the nominative ending is ir, even though we'd expect it to be ar. And that clues us in that this has an irregular plural. So instead of having dalar, as you'd expect to see in nominative, we have dalir instead. This is a very common ending for these words. Now this is also going to affect our accusative form, so check it out. It becomes dali instead of dala. And then the other two are as you'd expect them to see. So watch out for that IR in the plural. There can also be irregular genitives. For example, in the word funtur, we would expect the genitive word to be funts with an S. But in, this, in these parentheses, we see the AR ending, which means that the genitive ending is actually with an AR. So we have funtar is the genitive form. Now here we also have the IR in plural. We have funtir and funti. And then the other two are normal. Here's one more example I'd like you to look at. The word behkur, meaning a bench. The genitive has jar as the ending, so instead of having behks, like you'd expect, we have behkjar. And this also has an irregular plural with the ir, behkir, and behki. And we also see what's called j insertion on the dative and genitive forms. And that happens because we have the k followed by the I in the plural. We have behkir, which creates that J sound, and that gets carried through the dative and the genitive. All right, the next irregularity we're going to look at are nouns that end in anti. You'll often see the ending anti added on to a verb to represent a noun that does the verb. So the example we're going to look at is nemanti, which means a student or a studier. There are a lot of words that take this ending in Icelandic and they all have similar declension patterns. So this looks like you'd expect it to look in singular, but when you get to plural you have nementur instead, which almost looks like a feminine ending, so it's kind of confusing. But you have that both in nominative and accusative, nementur and nementur. And in dative and genitive you see that that e in the middle stays in it, so it becomes nementum and nementa. This is a very common pattern that's worth getting down so that you don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, let's talk about the third irregularity. This is the dative and plural umlaut. Now remember that umlaut means that we have a vowel shifting into a different vowel. And the way that we know that this is going to happen is by those parentheses that come after the word. So let's take a look at the word vatlur, which means a field or a court. Now we have a, an irregular genitive and an irregular plural. And if you notice that in the plural, we have a vowel shift. The ö uh becomes an ä. E, and that's going to affect our pattern a little bit. So if you check out in the singular, the dative form, we have vetli, And we see that same vowel shift in the dative as happens in the plural. Now in the plural, we also have the vowel shift vetlir and vetli. And then the dative and genitive plural are normal. Let's look at another example just like that. This is the word sonur, which means a son, as in a child. We have a genitive of sonar and plural sinir. So we see a vowel shift where the o becomes an i, which means that we're also going to see that in our dative form. So here is our singular sonur, son, and sini. And then in our plural form, we have sinir and sini. So just watch out how that plural umlaut can also affect the singular dative. One more example of that, the word björn, which means a bear. We have the, the plural form is birnir, where the ö becomes an i. 
and we're going to see that affect our dative. So we have in the singular Björn, Björn and Birni, and in the plural we have Birnir and Birni. All right, there are a couple of words that I'd like to point out that are highly irregular. They don't follow any patterns, and you really just need to learn these by themselves and get it down. You only need to learn it once, and then you'll have it down. The first is the word fadir, which means father. And in singular, we have fadir, further, further, and further. And then in plural, we have feather, feather, fedrum, and fedra. The next one is brother, which means brother. We have accusative brother, dative brother, and genitive brother. And in plural, we have brother, brother, brotherum, and brethra. The last one is mother, which means man. We have accusative man, dative manni, and genitive mans. And in plural, we have men, men, munnum, and manna. And one other thing to watch out for with this word is when you add the definite article onto the nominative plural form, it becomes menitnit rather than just mennir. So it gets the extra ir in the middle there. Remember that there are a lot of irregular nouns out there, and the best way to know for sure what form you need is to simply visit um, the BIN website, which will show you all the different forms for any noun that you type in. Hopefully this video will help you grasp some of the patterns in these words. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave any comments or questions below and I'll try to get to them. Bless, bless.